Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to House Calls with Tom Felicia. And um, I, uh, I just want to say hello, happy Wednesday, happy hump day, however you look at it. Um, and I hope you're all doing well and you're staying safe. And um, uh, a little bit of good news. Uh, things seem to be uh, getting a little bit better in New York City. Less people coming into the hospital, more people going out. And unfortunately, sadly, um, you know, people are still continuing to uh, succumb to uh, what's happening. But it seems like it's starting to level off at some level. And most importantly, is we still all have to stay home. So it's even though things are getting a little bit better in New York, um, hopefully we don't see that as a sign to uh, to not stay shelter in place and stay home. Um, it's really important that we continue to do that. But um, at least a little bit of positive news in a time when we don't get a lot of that. So speaking of um, house calls. So here we are, house calls today. Thanks for being here. Remember, please send questions. We love questions at house calls. So please send them. Um, and also, uh, today we're going to be talking to Corey uh, Damon Jenkins. He's a friend of mine. He's an amazing designer from uh, Detroit. He also has an office in New York City. Um, he's got great personal style. Uh, he's a great guy. I've known him for a long time. And uh, Corey is amazing. He's like, you're going to love him. Anyways, I can't wait for you to meet him. Let me see if Mr. Corey Damon. Je Cor there he is. Corey Damon in the house. Hello. Waiting to connect with Corey Damon. So I'm very excited for you guys to meet Corey. He's a lot of fun. And he's a great designer. Hello. Hello. How are you? Can you see me? I can see you, and I'm I can feel see your you. glasses. <laughs> By the way, back this up a little bit because it's like where, really, where really. Wherever you are is fabulous. I love I'm at what's home. going on behind you. I'm at home. Well, it's good looking. How Thank are you? you. Speaking of good looking, how are you? I'm good. You're good. You know, I, you know, I have, I have. I have good days and I have less than good days. Yeah. I'm getting a little bit of cabin fever right now. Yeah. I will admit that last night I did eat my feelings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Girl, everybody's eating their damn feelings. I mean, I'm trying, trying to get ready for the summer, get the six pack yeah. and everything tight. Yesterday I was like, you know, screw it. I got out a, a good size. Uh, uh, canister of um, Madagascar vanilla bean ice cream, Ooh. and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna have a small, little, tiny, little, you know, spoonful of yep. it at the fridge, right?" I said, I'm gonna "And then, by the way, then that container was empty by the television." Dude, I never left. The, I never left the fridge. I ate the whole thing by. I, I got on my phone and just kept scooping, and next thing I know, I'm like, "Oh, I just ate the whole." Damn, damn, damn. Ice cream. <laughs> Wait, so Corey, Corey, I have, that's hilarious. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the shenanigans that we're all doing as we are all sheltering in place. But I have a couple, so wait, wait, you're in, you're in Detroit, right? I'm in Bloomfield Hills, yep. About 45 minutes north of Detroit. Yep. Okay, beautiful area, Bloomfield Hills. Um, so you're there and, um, and you're, you're good, you're healthy, you're happy, you're all that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't so, seen a human being since like the beginning of March. So you're, you're, I'm, I'm loving seeing a human. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, this, I haven't had a hug in like this over is, a month. <laughs> yeah, this is like make believe get out of the house. So, anyways, so I'm so glad you're make believe get out of the house with me. But I want Corey for people that are just kind of tuning in. So Corey Damon Jenkins, he's an amazing designer. We've known each other for many years, yes. and Corey is based in Detroit, and he has an office in New York City. Uh, he's an amazing designer. Corey, you have, you have amazing personal style as well, Thank which you. I love. And I'm always like, God, I feel like such a, like a, a just an absolute, like I threw in the towel when I'm around you. Oh, uh, stop it. <laughs> uh, the thing I love about you, Corey, is that one of the things that's amazing about you, other than amazing designer and all of that, and but you are, you are all, you're at every design event. You, you come out for the design community. Yeah. You are a team player which I think is so cool. And um, yeah, I mean, what, what, what inspires you to do that? Like, why are you, I mean, you're at everything. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. When, when I launched my career as yep. a solo designer with my own firm 10 years ago, yep. um, I tried reaching out to different designers in Metro Detroit to become part of like a tribe. I wanted to you know, reach out to people. Yep. 
Yeah. And people back then in 2009, you know, we were in the recession. Right. People were so territor uh, territorial, Tom. Yeah. They didn't want to share resources. I'm like, who do you use for window treatments here in Michigan? Yeah. Who's your painter? And everyone's like, I'm not sharing anything with yeah. you. And so I always told myself that if I ever have the, the blessing of making in this industry, I would not be that type of person. Right. I would right. not be stingy. I would not be antisocial. I right. would be a supporter or cheerleader for my industry. Um, and so I just kind of stand by that. I just really believe that all ships rise in the tide. Right. I think that we all have our own unique yep. gifts. And your client is your client. My client is my client. Yeah, and there's one, enough clients for everybody. There's enough to go around. Exactly. And enough so, to go around. And, yep. and let me just say, so I always see that. I mean, look, you're, you're, you are a team player, and you are always, uh, you are always, um, uh, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're at everything. But wait, before we do anything, what are your thoughts about placing a lamp in front of a mirror? This is coming from a, uh, from a viewer. Um, so we'll get so that I, I might have got, gotten a, I was excited about this. Um, I, like those I was questions. looking at your your interior, which is fabulous. Um, I love putting a lamp in front of a mirror because it projects the light. I just think it's great. What do you think? I've done it before, especially like in master bedrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like over the nightstand. Yeah. I'll have a mirror floating over the mirror. nightstand, a gorgeous lamp. Because some people, believe it or not, get really freaked out when they get up in the middle of the night and they just they're, they're half asleep and they happen to see the reflection in the mirror. Yeah. I've had clients like literally almost have yeah. a heart attack, like freak out seeing their reflection. Yeah, I only have a heart attack when I'm nude. I'm like, ah, oh, who's yeah. <laughs> Right, <laughs> so you put a big ass lamp there and cover it up, you know, cover up, and that way you have the reflection in the light, but you're also not seeing yourself yeah. directly. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. So yeah, so that's a great question. Um, thanks for the question, by the way, and please send more. Um, okay, so you got started, when did you get started in the design community? Was it right out of school? Where did you go? Like, what yes. your, give us yeah. your background. So my whole, so I have a bit of a, of a trajectory story. So I'll keep it very short, yeah. Cliff Notes version. So I initially got started back in 1996 in New York City, working as an intern for a design company who yeah. supplemented my, my education. When I moved back to Michigan, my father was vehemently against me pursuing interior design. His whole thing was, look, I don't see any people that look like us in these magazines you like to read. Yeah. Why would you invest in that? Right. You should get a real job. No son of mine is going to be a starving artist. Right. So I moved into this the, the commercial world uh, right. as a purchasing agent and buyer for the yep. big three, uh, Ford, GM, what was at the time, Daimler Chrysler. Um, and that was fun. That's I cool. did that. For 10 years, you know, as a purchasing agent, right. but my manager at the time recognized my background with interior design. She started moving me into, so, go ahead. That's so cool. So wait, so yeah, okay, keep going. I'm loving this story. Yeah. So she moved me into a more design-centric responsibility um, uh, with, the, with the company. So I started designing like the lobbies, the commercial offices, the commercial spaces. I worked with um, Steelcase and Herman Miller. I yep. would design the executive yep. offices. Yep. Uh, it was commercial design, obviously, yeah, but it was yeah, still yeah, interiors yeah. as far as, you know, interior yeah, responsibility. Yeah, yeah. And I was responsible for purchasing and maintaining the budgets for all of those facilities. Right. Um, so I did that uh, for about, I want to say about four or five years. And then the recession hit. Yeah. In 2007, I went through 16 rounds of layoffs, survived them all, and I thought that I might actually keep my job. Right. And I got laid off in 2007. <laughs> Um, feel sorry for myself for a good 10, 11 months. You know, yep. I had to give up my, my fancy condo and my Emerald Green Volvo sedan because I was living a certain lifestyle. I was making some good, yeah, no, some no, good, no, I good cash. Look, it happened to a lot of people. I don't think you were alone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so at that point, that's when I decided to stop feeling sorry for myself. Yep. So I started looking for a new job, uh, tried getting back into my industry as a purchasing agent. That was not happening. Right. So I said, you know what? Why don't I just start me focusing on interior design? Went to Robert Allen Beacon Hill, a showroom yes. at Detroit. Yep. Michigan yep. Design Center. Great showroom, yeah. Yeah, and, and Patty Mulkinson, she was the manager there. I adore her to this day. She's like my mom. She looks at my resume, and she's like, hey, first of all, you're overqualified for this job. Secondly, I can't pay you what you really worth, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, because I said, look, I just want to get Did off. Did you ask for a company time. car? Were you like, can I get a, a Emerald Green Volvo company car? No, I wasn't. No, and a I, no, because it was basically a stock. It was a stock boy job. I was yeah, basically yeah. literally taking out the trash, you were like, walking you were, down the mirrors, yeah. wrapping up artwork. How old, and furniture. How old were you when you did this? I was 30. 
thirty. Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah, younger. 20, yeah, twenty nine, thirty. And so she says, "I'll hire you, but just so you know, it's basically if you're taking out the trash every day." You know, I said, "Okay, it's fine." So she gave me a smock. I had a I had a chocolate brown. Remember those uh, chocolate brown yeah. Robert Allen smocks with the Robert Allen Beacon Hill on yeah, the chest? Yeah, little Beacon Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I had to wear this. They gave me five of these Egyptian cotton smocks. Uh, smocks. Now keep in mind, they were Egyptian cotton. She was like, they are Egyptian cotton, just so you know. I'm like, oh, ooh, it's still a smock, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I like, wore this hey, thing. Hey, is it an Egyptian cotton mop that I'll be using? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so, but I was not going to just wear the smocks. Of course, me being me, I had to uh, wear a chocolate brown leather jacket buttoned down over the smock every oh, day. Right. You know, I, I, I was always fancy. You were killing it. You were yeah, well, I thought, you I, probably, thought I was. You're probably still talking about it to this day. Well, the point is, is that four months later, I got laid off from that job. So that's when the recession was really bad in 2008. And at that point, I decided, let's go ahead and just go for a job that you can't be outsourced from. These politicians, these different, you know, um, uh, powers are looking at you as a as a, a line item on a spreadsheet as far as your salary. And you're dispensable. People are yeah. in control of your destiny. Yeah control your own destiny. Right. So I launched my own design firm in November of 2009. Now, and out, when you launched yeah. your own design firm, did you have a client? No. No, you just opened it. Hell no, no. I had a dream. Like, Girl. Like, <laughs> I had a right. dream. I said, Good I said for you. you know what, I'm going to try this. Uh, and that brings us back to your original question about reaching out to other designers in the local area. Some of the designers that I was trying to reach out to for help, like who's your favorite window treatment person, who's your favorite painter, they were the same designers that I was pulling memos for as a memo librarian just months earlier. Yeah. So they're like, what are you doing here? Like, like they, they didn't really take me seriously. You know, like yeah. stock boy for Robert Allen now wants to be an interior designer. Oh, okay. Good yeah, luck okay. with that. I mean, good Check back in six months. That's right. 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 Now look um, at you. But I went knocking on doors. I, I knocked on 779 doors, door to door over a period of months. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that could be okay. That's a that's a that's a m movie. That's a movie. Yeah. Door to door decorating. Yeah, <laughs> I had a simple spiel. My By the way, was, that was house calls before we had house calls. For real, like I love your whole series here because house calls is really apropos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally, this doctor gave me a chance. He gave me a decent budget to design a few rooms in his home with his wife and. I got them professionally photographed, and um, HGTV saw my website. I, okay, wait, I and was going to ask it. you. So HGTV, you start. You also had an HGTV television that show that you were yes. on. So is that so? This is how you segued into HGTV. Yeah. Okay, keep, when, going. When, keep when, going. So when Drew, the casting agent for 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 scripts, when he reached out to me, yep. he was like, "Hey, we're we're By doing way, a I'm show." I'm having a little, a little wine in the early afternoon. Well, that's fine. I got my little coffee. Mm. But I may have a little something mixed in with it. Oh, yeah. I, I won't like say what it is. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, well, you know, you got to come prepared. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, Drew called me. He was like, hey, we are looking to do this new show. We like your look. We need diversity on our, on our, on our cast. Would you be considered, would you consider, you know, uh, auditioning for us? Yeah, yeah. And at that time, Tom, my self-esteem was kind of shot. Even though I had gotten my first big yeah. client, all those you know, 779 doors being slammed in my face after losing my career, my job. Right, right. That's a lot of hits to a, to a man's right. self-esteem and our sense of self-worth. I had, had some right. strange totally, damage. Totally got right. it. So I just kind of um, didn't want to call him back. I didn't think I was deserving of it. And uh, I, I didn't. No, because remember. They must have loved you. Yeah, I mean, eventually I went yeah. ahead and auditioned for it. My dog is um, whining. Get over here. Oh. Come on. Okay, there he is. Hey, he baby. wanted to come and say hello. Hey, hello. baby. Say hi, Paco. Hi. Hey. <laughs> he, I'm like, he gets very upset when I don't pay attention to him. They are, they're like children. Okay, so then kids. what happened? So, you know, long story short, um, I auditioned for the show. Yeah. I got cast. Um, Patty, the casting director, uh, was living in LA at the time, and she didn't want to wait until the next morning to tell me I got in the the role. So she called me like around eleven o'clock at night. And how Eastern many people time. were cast? How many, what, that that show was. Um, um, what was the name of that design show? Was it was Show House Showdown. Show House Showdown, right? Yeah, thirteen and episodes, twenty six designers. Design show on HGTV, yep. and yep. you were selected as one of the designers, right? Yeah, and they had about fifty six different designers from Michigan audition for the show. Yeah. And, and then how many did they choose? Mm -hmm. How many did they choose? 
Uh, 26 designers, a cast 26. of 26, and they will whittle it down every yeah. every week. Yeah. And how were the um? And how were the uh? And how were the judges? How many judges? Well, the, actually, they had the the televised audiences call in. They, the the televised audience yeah. would vote on the winner every episode of the challenge. So they right. would have literally people from the local area come on set you know, two or 300 people, and they would have people cast votes. And then Bob Guinea, right. you know Bob Guinea, Bob yeah. from, from The Bachelor, he was our, our host. Got it, right. So, I remember the show. I remember, yeah. I remember yeah. you on it. Yeah. 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 So I won, and then everything kind of blew up. Was that so. crazy? Like, so you were on that show, um, and it probably took, what, like a month, two, two months to shoot? We shot from April of 2011 no, I'm sorry, February of 2011, we filmed from there through, I want to say May. Right. But I wasn't, on, I wasn't in every part of every segment. So they would bring me on to do my part and I would right. go back to work. Right. But also, by the way, there's a lot of, as you know, working in television, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. Yes. Then there's a camera that goes down, then there's lighting issues, then there's sound yeah. issues, then there's a person who like, has like situation, a per you know, you just, it's one thing after the other. Yeah, um, B-roll footage, all right. of that. Yeah, Rubbing yeah. your hands across the fabrics. Yeah. Or the network closer. comes in and needs to like <laughs> change something because they're not, they're worried about, you know, whatever yeah. for, for some reason. Um, but so you, did you enjoy making television? I did, I loved it. I mean, and, and not just because I won. I mean, obviously I had a great time because I won. But um, for me, <laughs> After I got over myself and got out of my own way in terms of my self-esteem and not thinking that I was deserving of the honor, right. um, I enjoy teaching people. I enjoy right. peeling away the, the, the curtain of the mystique of design right. and actually sharing with people um, and design enthusiasts what we do. And so yeah. it gave me a chance, a huge platform before literally millions of people on Monday night um, yeah. to share the, the behind the scenes of what we do as designers. Right. So I had a blast. I had a yeah. lot of fun. That's great. And how did you handle the recognition after being, because when you do a television show like that, it is amazing how many people sort of, you know, it's just, you, you become sort of uh, somewhat recognizable mm -hmm. and people, you know, they're in, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a weird thing a little bit. I mean, and some people handle it well and some people don't. How did you handle it? I was a little overwhelmed with it, yeah. if I could be honest with you, because for me, so, and you know this being in television yourself and having done it for so long, we can have different personalities for the camera. Like right, right. now, you and I are both on. We have an right. audience watching, we have people tuning right. in with, you know, that are enthusiastic about yep. you know, design. So we're on, but personally, I'm much more shy than what I may come across on camera right. or on television. And so people will come up to me like at High Point Market or on the street and like, ah, and I'm like, oh, you know, because naturally I'm much yeah. more reserved and laid back right. than the, because you have to kind of pump right. it up for the camera. I will say though, I will say though, I, I, that I can see you, you, I think you're, you're kind of a quiet, I mean, you're very much, you're out there and you participate in everything, but you are a little, you're, I think you're a little bit more, um, you have like a, a more subtle approach, but yeah. when you come in and you're on, you're on. Yeah. I, you know what? I honestly, I swear, I'm the same when I'm by myself with my dogs. Yeah. If I'm out at a party, I'm pretty much. I mean, I just I have like an on and an off switch, and that's yeah. it. I don't that's have awesome. like, <laughs> like when I'm off, I'm asleep, and when I'm on, I'm awake. And so yeah. I like for me, it was not a real difficult thing to do to be. Um, in front of people and to also um, in, in deal with the, the recognition part of it. Because I was already like, you know, kind of like, ah, you know, like a lot to begin with. So um, it wasn't so bizarre for me, but I have seen certainly people I've worked with, many different people I've worked with, um, who are a little bit more private and a little bit more mm -hmm. quiet and subtle in their mm -hmm. behavior. Um, they tend to, um, they tend to have a harder time with you know being at a restaurant and people coming over and sort of asking you in the middle of your meal to take a picture or talk to exactly and the I, selfies yeah you know i look at it as like i've always looked at it as like those are people are watching the show there are clients and as a person who has clients you kind of want to make sure and take care of your clients and make sure that they feel like you're 
you know, like you're present. So yeah, like you're running for politi like like you're a politician running for office. Yeah. Your constituents, right? Right. right. Your exactly. constituency support you as far as you know purchasing your products, you know purchasing right. your books, watching you on right. television. Right. I think that there's definitely a great deal of respect that has to be given to those yeah. who are supporters. Yeah. I think also if you're coming into it. If you're coming into it from the angle of pomp and circumstance and wanting all yep. the attention, then people like that are going to eat it up and love it. Right. I came into it just looking for an opportunity to get my company off the ground, you know? And so I think that it took an adjustment for me. I love people. I'm, I'm extroverted to an extent, but I'm definitely an introverted extrovert. Someone, so someone just said, time for you, me to... listen, so um, Corey, someone just said, you may be shy, but you are an extremely nice person. I loved meeting you in Chicago. So oh, that was really nice. Who was that? Uh, that was Donna Manila. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know yeah that's so sweet. Oh, that yes, was, that, was, that was fairly recent. Oh, yeah. I love that. So let yeah. me ask you another question. Hey, Donna. Uh, Corey. So Detroit. Now, yeah. you've grown up in and around Detroit, right? Like, you're, yeah. you're, this is like the region where you're from. Um, and so you've decided to you you have an office there mm -hmm. you have an office you have an office in new york so yep. in detroit i want i'll tell you why i love detroit but i want to hear why isn't detroit important to you to maintain this connection with and 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 the relationship with detroit when you could i mean i know you're working in new york and you could be anywhere so and i love detroit but go i want to hear your your detroit you know? i appreciate that question um a couple of reasons one again going back to the recession right. there was a huge um Exodus yeah. from Detroit as far as designers. Many people actually, flock out. Detroit they actually left. went bankrupt. Is that yes. an amazing thing for people? Yes. No, but keep going. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of folks, a lot of designers left. Those of us, the few of us that stayed behind weathered yep. that storm. So I feel a commitment. Yep. I feel like Detroit yep. is like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Yes. Um, I think being part of the automotive industry and losing my job, I kind of yep. fell when Detroit fell and I got up when Detroit got up. So yep. I feel this 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 um, sort of connection yeah. to the city. I feel this 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 vibe between yep. me and Detroit. Yep. Um, my family is here. My grandparents, you know, uh, lived here. So it goes past my history. But also beyond that, um, Detroit's a gorgeous city. You know, yes. we're an old city. The the, the, the neoclassical Italianate buildings with all the yes. tremendous architecture. Um, we are in the oh, same era of time as New York. Is Mind Bananas. blowing! It's right? Like, you can't yeah. believe it. You can't believe it. It's amazing. People don't realize that, and they sleep on it. Yeah. Um, we're also the home to not only cars, with the wellspring of how this country transports itself, but we're also the home to many other things. You know, Shinola watches. We're home to more I'm, music, techno yeah. music. Oh my God! There's so much here. No, no. So let me tell you. So Corey, so this is. I have to tell you the story. Yeah. Because I what this was years ago. My ex-boyfriend, Greg, and I used to go to, believe it or not, to the Jets games um, mm -hmm. because, and we were, we were invited to, to a box and it was the, the, uh, the owner of, uh, of the Jets and his wife would invite all of these people and everyone would go and it was really fun. And of course I was there because it was fun and I was kind of watching the game. I'd only watched like the last, like, you know, the last, you know, five, 10 minutes where I was really interested. But it was really social and fun. We were having a great time. I sat down and was having drinks with at that time the mayor of detroit and okay he, and mm -hmm. we were talking about detroit he's like you've got to come to detroit it's amazing you know we went bankrupt but we had to go bankrupt to get rid of all of the negative stuff so we could start fresh and i'm like that's so cool so anyways he and i talked for like maybe an hour i was so excited about detroit mm -hmm. so i started i so i said i want to go to detroit so we i went on a trip to detroit with um with my office with uh, a few people from my office and we went and we had a shinola visit like a tour yes. of shinola like a private tour yeah. unbelievable yeah. we did the motown whole motown thing mm -hmm. there's pictures of me laying down in front of the house <laughs> like Dodge Gabor. i mean it was really <laughs> fun we went to all the new amazing restaurants we went to like we went to open houses in indian village and i was like We're yeah. to these houses i love these houses so yeah. Detroit, I was really fascinated by Detroit because it is, um, there's such an amazing art scene there right now. There's an amazing food scene there right now. Um, it yeah. is like you said, it's like a phoenix rising, you know, from mm -hmm. the ashes. And, um, and the thing is, is the architecture 
It's an iconic American city. Yes. The architecture is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a lover of the automobile. I have a classic mm -hmm. automobile and a new automobile in my driveway, and I love both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I am a, I'm, I love cars. I love boats. Um, I like anything that kind of goes fast. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Detroit, to me, is like, it's just an iconic city. And to see it coming back um, is, in a lot of ways, I think just sort of like, it's such an, a great American story and people love a comeback, you know? Yeah, people love do. to see Martha Stewart go to jail and come back. <laughs> come back, right. Like, we love a Get comeback out. story, you know? Right. And Detroit is a comeback story. And I love that you chose to stick with it because, you know, I'm in this house right now. I'm in mm -hmm. Skinny Atlas, New York. I'm Skinny Atlas Lake. I grew up in central New York. Um, and so I live in New York City and I have a house in the area where I'm from mm -hmm. and I come back here and I'm able to see like where I, you know, I'm, I participate with my early life. My, my new life comes here mm -hmm. and I have a new life in my old life. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. so, and it's just, it's interesting to connect at that many levels. And so it's nice because it, uh, I don't know. I mean, it just, it's nice to be connected to what's familiar yeah. and also to not abandon like kind of where you're from to right. move to something you know it's like it's like when someone says like oh it's that kind of person that like they got a better invitation you know what i mean yeah yeah it goes to like, different party i yeah. got a better invitation but i'll be yeah. honest with you i'm still i still love where i'm from right and you know new york city is incredible yes. but having both of them and having that balance I think is like really amazing, and I and then, recommend it to everybody. Yeah, and in there, in there, I have an apartment, an office in New York, and I have a condo and office yep. studio here in Detroit. Yep. So we have different types of clients that we're servicing in these, you know, the Northeast and the Midwest. You know, we work up in Toronto quite a bit as well in Canada, yep. and the people. What I find is very interesting is that Midwesterners are generally known as being very nice, polite, yes. warm you know, oh, hospitable people. Yeah. New Yorkers get this bad rap, but I found that they're actually just as nice and kind of a different way. I Less agree. BS, they have zero toleration yeah, for... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot cannot. of love. Right. There's not right. a lot of just sort of like, you know, like... Kumbaya, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need directions, I'm going to give you directions, you need this, right. I'm going to get you that. People are... But they will help you. They will help you, but it's they very direct. You. And I actually, I have to say, I really do like that. And coming from upstate New York, um, which is very Midwestern in yes. accessibility, yes. Um, I I like both. I, I love the, um, you know, I like that New York is direct. And it, you know, when we're in motion, mm -hmm. when we are in motion, it's hard for us to slow down. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, um, well, okay, so let me move on to something else. I wanted to say, first of all, I absolutely love your project that was on the cover of House Beautiful recently. Oh, thank you. It's a great project. It's a Michi It's a family in, Nor in Michigan, right? Yeah, yeah, Ann Arbor, yeah. In Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yeah. And um, it's a great looking uh, project that you did. And it's on the cover yeah. of House Beautiful. So anyone that's watching, you can, uh, what, what month was it? Was it March? Uh, March, it was March. Last month, yeah, last month. So it was a March and it's a great look. It's very tailored, it's very clean. It's a, you know, it's got a sort of a retro moment, a modern moment, and it's sort mm -hmm. of a classic, very classic kind of moment as well. And right. some little Hollywood moments, which I like. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny how when that couple approached me, they, you know, the reason why so much of my work is traditional is because the area that I live in, Detroit, yeah. the homes there are very American colonial yes. revival. Yeah. Uh, or Italianate, you know, as right. far as their archi yeah. uh, neoclassical architecture. Yeah. Yeah. And so as a result of all the bones, you know, the egg and dar, the dental, yeah. you know, molding, that's just kind of what we have in these gorgeous yeah. homes. Yeah. So this was a brand new build that we built from the ground up. And the couple had moved in from out of state and they were like, listen, we like you, we want to work with you, but your, your portfolio is really traditional. Yeah. We really don't see ourselves that way. Right. Can we do it? And I was like, look, good design's about like, principles, not about rules, you know? Yeah. So I was really happy to do that. Um, I did not know I got in the front cover until I was at LaGuardia Airport. 
Well, they don't um, tell you. Isn't that so funny? Whenever you get the front, whenever you get the cover of the magazine, they never tell you. And it's, it's a complete surprise. Happen. Joe yeah. Salt, um, the editor, the editorial director there at House Beautiful, messaged me. She's like, I'm so sorry you found out that way. I was going to send you the, the front cover and how to you know, pronounce it yeah. on Instagram for your followers. But I, I, I started crying. I, I was in the airport, Tom. I see the That's two awesome. facings of the front cover. And I knew, I knew we had the article coming out because I had done the interview, but I didn't know we had gotten the front cover. So this lady that's running the newsstand, she's watching me. I took all the magazines off the shelf because for some reason I thought, well, maybe just this one magazine has this front cover. Maybe all the other ones have a different front cover. Because <laughs> I just didn't think, again, I was deserving. You thought of it, it was you know? like they, they played, they like, like played April something Fool's on joke. You. Right. So I went through all of them and I got tears running off my chin. And she's like, this lady's like, what is this guy doing? I'm like, I got the front cover. She's like, okay, security, come get this yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got a cray cray online. Yeah, a little cray cray, but um, it was huge. That's my first time having a full flesh spread. That's amazing. Beautiful. Well, I so, have to say, yeah. it looks great. It's funny, someone yeah. just said, Corey, you're a little Hollywood, you're a little bit Hollywood. So I love that. And by the way, I don't think, I don't, I think that's very accurate because I have to say what I like about what you did in that um, house is that First of all, like there was one room that you did in this great kind of blue color that was kind of vibrant. Yeah. Um, it was really awesome and I loved. Um, I really loved the fireplace in the living room. With the Madison style. Uh, yeah. It was marble. It was really yeah. um, So there were like these, there was a pair of doors that were like kind of another blue color, a lighter yeah. blue with sort of this sort of like Hollywood Regency kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, reset the panel, set. Detail, yeah. two round knobs. So yeah, it was great. I really liked, I, I have to say, I liked the, um, the sort of, uh, there's an energy to like your style, your personal style is the same thing. There's an energy to it. Like you're not, um, it's, it's timeless and it's a, traditional, but it's got a lot of energy. It's got a lot of like, it's like, it's very sort of like, it's stylized, it's stylish and it's kind of like, it's got energy and I love that energy. I think it's really great. I will tell you, even what I'm seeing behind you looks awesome and it's oh, fabulous. You know, I got my little my little bowls and my little yeah. I've yeah. been figuring out how to make, you know, noise with this. I yeah, I, I got actually it. figured it out. But it takes like a lot that. of concentration. Yeah. I'm not very focused. Yeah. So I just kinda of said that. So, <laughs> so Corey, I have to ask you. So like with all of that being said, how would you describe your style? Hmm, I would describe my style as a bold continental mix. So bold for color and pattern, continental for European, because there are a lot of European yeah, yeah. flavors in what I do. And then yeah. the mix is all about mixing, putting it all into a big blender and just pushing yeah. go. Less rules, I more think, principles. You know, I, I, think, I think bold is like kind of what I was using for energy. I think yours is like energetic. It feels to me the word isn't... I think it's just energized. It, it feels like it's like your personality. It's just like you're you're like it's like the it's classic, and I would use that as the word calm. Like that's your calm side, yeah. but it's energized. So it's I like what we were talking that. about before. It's that kind of. And by the way, that's a great balance, I think. Yeah. And I and I well, love you see your work as well, Tom. I mean, I purchased so much of your product, like through oh, the Crabbit okay. line. I mean, a lot of this is actually quite a bit of your product in that house, that's in House Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, because it's the wall great. coverings, the yeah. fabrics, the trims, you know, yeah. they speak to what we need, what, what my yeah. brand needs. So that's in your work as well. And that's what I'm talking about as far as designers as an industry. We support each other. We yeah. come together. We, we prop each other up. Um, and there's no competition because we all bring something fresh and dynamic to the table. And as a result, like I said earlier, yeah. all ships rise in the tide. Well, so, I have to just tell you, uh, Perry Walter just said, Corey, you have a wonderful use of color. I love your style. So I think Aww. that's cool. Thanks, um, Perry. Okay. So, Corey, um, well, let me just let you know. So speaking of which, um, my house is actually this month. Uh, is it April? We're in April, right? It's yeah. this month, April. In El Decor, uh, right? El Decor, yeah, my apartment yeah, in New York City. congratulations. So, yeah, so you got to check it out. Um, yeah. So um, you do commercial and residential pro projects, right? Mm -hmm. And you also do product. So mm -hmm. you have kind of like, you have like a, an interesting kind of like mix of of product, residential, commercial, which I love. Um, right. what, how, how are you enjoying all of that? 
Well, I, I appreciated the, the, the commentary that you had yesterday with Genevieve, because I think that for those of us who are expanding beyond the meat and potatoes of interior yeah. design decoration and getting involved with other um, yeah. extracurricular activities, I like to call it, mm -hmm. uh, and product design, it keeps us very busy, especially in a situation like now, where a number of my construction projects have come to a halt due to this shelter in place right. mandate yeah. from our governor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm still but with I will them. say, I will say with that, it's amazing to see that so many of my clients are still, like everybody is very like optimistic about, you know, this happening and being in like, the, it's sad and it's terrible, but we right. do know that it's gonna end at some point in the near future. And they want to continue to move forward with the things they can move forward with. Construction has to right. stop, but they're buying outdoor furniture, they're buying their window treatments, they're buying mm -hmm. their rugs, they're buying, yeah. their, they bu Lighting. they're purchasing the fabric and yeah. set, we're sending it to, the upholsterer who can't be working right now, but as soon as they get back, they're front of line. So yeah. it is, it, it actually is moving still. So that's, a yeah. Good, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to be able to be focused. You know, I, yes. I have my, um, my very first uh, coffee table book coming out on Rizzoli literally a year from now, dropping pretty soon. And so yeah. we're working on writing, I'm writing the book, you know, I'm yeah. working on my sketches and my photography and laying things yeah. out with my book designer, with the editor of Rizzoli. So yeah. there's a lot of things that we can still do now, you know, so let me just story. say this. I wanted yeah. to talk about that. Um, you you are working on a book right now with yeah. Rizzoli, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, I you were we were talking about this when we when we last saw each other. And yeah. um and so that, I think that's really exciting. I love Rizzoli. I think you know I'm excited to see um your book and I'm excited about it. And you were talking about the photography and all of that and you know it, writing a book ain't easy. Oh I my mean, god. By the way, I can't ever. spell, I've done three. <laughs> Hello, but, but you um, feel my pain though. I was because yeah. it was just it was just literally I think five weeks ago that you and I were having lunch together at the uh, two hundred Lexington Design Center, and we were yeah. talking about Nantucket. Remember that yeah. was just five weeks ago, and it's amazing how so much has happened and changed in just a span yeah. of five weeks. And now we're doing this because we can't go to the New York Design yeah. Center. But yeah. we were talking about the book, and it's such an it's such an endeavor. I mean, just writing captions and yeah, oh my and, god. And There's getting the so photography much. right and getting everything right yeah. and dealing with and you're going back and forth. But you know what? When it's all done, it will be amazing. And um <laughs> when, when do you think what what's your ETA? What what's your expected uh time of completion? I'm told that it goes to print in August of this wow. year. So that means it'll be out for this fall, which is a great time to come out with it. Okay, yeah. good. So Probably everybody, everyone who's years. watching. You, everyone who's uh, who's invited us in uh, into their space, into their homes, into their offices today, uh, or home away from home, or <laughs> wherever we are, wherever we're sheltering in place, um, Corey is going to have his book will be out probably this fall, and um, and it's with Rizzoli, and it's going to be cool. Do you know the name of it yet? I do, but I can't say. Okay, okay. You know how it goes. We're, right now, we're picking out the front cover shot. I got it. I got we're picking it. out the little details. Well, so. I, you know, we're we're kind of in the super infancy of working on a new book as well, and, um, oh, and there's a good chance we may be with the same we may be with the same uh, same house. So they're awesome to work. Yeah, with. yeah, yeah. No, they're no. the best. Like they're really? so supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and let me ask you a question. So, do you have a favorite? Um, you know, do you have a favorite type of project that you work on? Like, what any? Like, what's your favorite thing to do? Is it commercial, residential? Is it product? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I still enjoy the residential design process. I love working with clients. I love, I'm at a point in my career where I'm not looking to necessarily make a statement of my own through a client's home. But it's like, it's like a doctor working with patients. I like working with different patients who have different homes, they have different ailments in their home, they need to have a prescription, you know, written up to fix their house, you know, and so right. everyone's different. Uh, I have clients that are calling on me from all over the world. And so I love yeah. the diversity. I love the cultures. I love right. the religions. I love the taste that they yeah. bring to these yeah. projects. Yeah. And the mandates that I'm given to really, you know, sow those personal tastes and styles into what we do. Yeah. So I'm having a lot of fun working with people one-on-one. -on -one. Product development is still a lot of fun for me as well. Obviously, we have a lot more control over that outcome. Uh, we've got some pretty fun things do, coming do out. Do you, question, do you enjoy product design? Yeah, yeah, 
If, if you have the right partner, it can be an amazing collaboration. And yes, I think that that's yes. really important. And not just some people will ask, like, well, should I have a collection? I agree. Get a collection that makes sure that the partnership is a good partnership. Yes. A good, like, I love the dynamic between you and Eastern Accents. They adore yes. you. you oh, know? my God. They're, and Kravit. They have to have a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. There, Kravit. You know? I love Kravit. I'm, I love, I mean, I'm so lucky. I love Vanguard. I mean, you know, I have a... Uh, Wendover. I mean, we, there's like so many of like all of we, we have really great. Um, yeah, I do love nice. having those kind of relationships. But you know what? I really love just having those kind of relationships with the people I work with, with right. the people that I um, like. I love like what you were saying earlier. I like having that community. So yes. I love all of us designers coming together and being friends and supporting each other because I just think there's like it's it's fun. It's interesting. There's power in numbers. I mean, it's just good. Um, yeah. How do you see the relationship between interiors and product? Do you think that's a, do you, do you like that? Is it a good thing? I do, um, but I will find myself using other designers' product than my own. Like I yep. plug your yep. stuff all the time. Yep. I'll pull in uh, I, celery stuff quite a bit. Yep. Yep. I'll pull in, um, uh, uh, oh my God, Alexa. her name, Kelly. Alexa, I mean, I Alexa. love Alexa. I, I, use, I use a lot yep. of Alexa stuff. In fact, yep. my front cover with Traditional Home Magazine a few years ago had Alexa's chairs on yes. the front cover and that and that. So I'll pull that, I'll pull Kelly Wurstler. Yes. But I'm very, I'm very ambivalent about pulling my own. It's, it's the well, rare situation. You don't want to seem too, yeah. You know, I it's have- kind of opportunistic. I, I mean, I the client likes it, it is great, it but- It seems like you're pushing push your own agenda, but, but yeah. you know, the thing is, is that I have clients that like, I'll show them two or three things and they sometimes just, they'll just naturally, they just yes. have best. And also the pricing tends to be better. Why? Because right. I'm kind of getting it, you know, I'm getting it direct. Basically. Right. Um, so wait, someone just said the design, econ the design uh, and economy will explode after this virus passes. Passes. It will be great. So that's mm -hmm. kind of fun. I love the enthusiasm mm -hmm. and I love the optimism that people have about this um, coming, you know, about this changing, you know what I mean? Because I know we all feel like we're kind of stuck right now and, yeah. and, and we're sheltering in place to protect somebody else, mm -hmm. to protect our grandparents, our best friends, our people we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's hard. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that are being, I mean, I went through it and I'm lucky to be on the other side, but there are people that are still going through it or people that, that, that it's just, it's really, it's really been difficult. So we have yeah. to keep that in mind. Um, but on a more positive note, do you have a dream project to work on? Like anything you're like dying to do that you haven't done yet? I want to do a plane. Oh, by the way. I hear they're very I hard to do. A like private jet? I have huh? bad news for you. What? It, it, first of all, it, it's fun. I mean, I did one, okay? Right, I did a private jet. I also worked for Delta Airlines. I did um, outdoor lounges at uh, New York City. Uh, and it, 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 at, at, uh, at, um, I did it at JFK and also in Atlanta. I did these outdoor things. You know, everything has to pass like these flame tests. So basically, it either has to be made out of concrete or something that just can't catch on fire. Right. Or, it's not very attractive. You know, so it's like, it's kind of hard. I, have I know. But I still want to like, do it. But I, but I totally get that you want to do it. And by the way, you should. And I know you will. I know you I will. I hope so. Yeah, young, you, know, you know Young Ha, right? Uh, young Ha out of New York, yeah. Young Ha. Yeah, yeah. She did a private plane yeah. that was bananas. Really? And I told her, I said, oh my God, girl, that jet right there. I mean, I would fly that just for myself. It was so sweet. Yeah. So I was like, you yeah. know what? I haven't done a plane yet. I need to put that on my bucket list. So oh, cool. My boat. Jet. I want to do a big yacht. I have not oh. done a yacht yet. I've and done a yacht. Right. That was and fun. I have a boat. I have a boat. It's a very small little criss craft. But, um, but I would love to do a yacht. And, and by the way, and I think you don't have to worry so much about it burning down because it's on water, but they do right. catch on fire. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that some of the same principles apply. I've done a yacht a few years ago. Yep. Some of the same principles do apply, but it's a yep. little less stringent with a boat than say a plane. Yep. So. Yes, yeah, yeah. It has to be durable. It has to, you, it has to pat, you know, you have to be able to sit on it with a wet bathing suit. Yes. But it doesn't, you're not so worried about jet fuel, but right. um, is always, which is always a downer. Um, anyways, okay. Um, how do you see the industry um, sort of evolving or, you know, coming out of this sort of, you know, pandemic, this situation? Mm, great question. Okay, so um, I think that 
a couple of, I think a couple of things. One, I think that those of us who are in this industry are going to be even more focused on making sure that we have a nest egg set aside. Yeah. The situation caught a lot of us down, caught a lot of us where our pants were on our, around our ankles. Yeah. Um, so I learned that from last time, the last recession. Right. So always, like when I bought my new, um, my new luxury SUV, I won't say what it uh -huh. is. I have another one. I paid for that that bad boy up front, no car no. I didn't I didn't want to find I didn't want to finance I I because I'm still thinking in the mindset of the recession from 10 years ago. So when this happened, I was okay, you know, because I had I had budgeted in such a way to where I prepared in case something like this might happen again. So I think on that yeah. level, designers have to be smart. And a lot of times Designers are not the best business people. They're good yeah, creatives, right. but totally. they're terrible when it comes we were to managing just talking their money. About that yesterday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that's one thing that they're going to learn, that we have to learn is, you know, put aside something, prepare for the worst, have a rainy day fund. Uh, not a go fund me, but a rainy day fund for yourself. Um, I also think that to the comment that someone made on our, on, our, on our live feed, I do think that because it was not an economic recession, it was more of a, of a health crisis, there will be a pent up um, desire to spend, to splurge. I think many industries will bounce back quickly because people are gonna be just so happy to be able to yes. go to the mall or go to the yeah. center, oh my God. go to a restaurant. We're gonna, um, I think we're gonna go banana town. town. We're gonna go banana yeah. town. <laughs> yeah, but I think that in the meantime, I think there will be some new lessons learned yeah. in terms of digital yep. management, doing yep. more virtual calls. Yep. We've been doing virtual calls like via Zoom and FaceTime yep. for years yep. because I've got clients yep. out, of state, out of country and I can't always hop on the plane to pick out if, whether or not this wallpaper seam is matching up properly on right. site contractor, right. you know, just get me on FaceTime. Right. So, so think, we're going to see more of that. I, I think, think, we're gonna, I think you're right. I think we're yeah. going to see more of that. I think, I think people are going, I think some of the, um, I think restaurants are going to be much more mindful about sort of cleanliness and sort of just kind of some of the things that they've implemented to keep their businesses going. Mm -hmm. I think that design is going to be much more, um, I think people are going to really focus on home right now. Mm -hmm. And I do think that, um, I think from a business perspective, I think you're hundred percent right. We're going to be a little bit more, there's going to be more of a virtual approach to how we conduct business, which I think is really kind of cool yeah so, i agree I but in this self-isolating moment um i don't know it just i think we're all learning these kind of things i mean you're you're self-isolating right so you're by yourself you said right yes it sucks i okay so i need a hug i was by myself <laughs> yes i haven't touched anybody in over a month oh i was God, virtual I hug, virtual hug oh, yeah. um, no but i was i was by myself for the first week and that was tough but i was sick and when you're sick i had the virus and when you're right. sick you are um you know you don't kind of really need you don't want people to be around but i had to walk my dogs and i was in the city and i was you know but when i got well enough i left and i came out to my house i was here for another week by myself and then i got better from the coronavirus but then i got worse because i had pneumonia which mm -hmm. then that got better thank god oh my god tom you've been through it knock on wood knock on wood but anyways, so I um, I was by myself for those two weeks. Then one of my friends, one of my close friends who lives in New York City, who went through coronavirus and was on the other side, I said, well, since you're over it and I'm over it, let's maybe cohabitate together. So he came out, he stayed in my guest house. And I have to say, it's great to have a partner in crime. Yeah. And I also have my two dogs, which is very helpful. So what is it like for you self-isolating in Motor City? How's that going? It sucks. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's... Well, it's, there you I mean, have it. Yeah. I'm just just, that all, it. all you got to say. I had a it's birthday on March 25th. Yeah. So this is my, my the first of my celebrated birthday pretty much alone. I mean, I had a bunch yeah. of friends join me on, uh, I think we used the house party app to celebrate. Yeah. I got a nice little fun bunt cake. Uh, bunt cake yes. uh, that one of my adorable clients turned me on to um, from a local like a local bakery, right. but it was it's 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 not easy. You know, I don't have um, I don't have any pets. I think that yeah. it would be a little more manageable if I had like a little yeah. warm body yeah. in this right. condo. They're the best. And all of my close friends and 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 my running buddies like you and so many others, you guys are all in New York, and I just happened to be here. I was tempted to come back to my apartment in New York this week. 
But I'm, yeah. I'm deciding to really stay put because it does look as if things are improving. And I don't want to be. Well, it's starting to improve. Just so you know, it is starting yeah. to improve. But you got it. Yeah, I think we have to. I this think we have true. to shelter in place for now. Um, yeah. I would. So let me. We have a question here. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys uh, have a smart home, and do you think it's a good idea for a family home? Yes, and yeah. I mean, this yeah. house, this condo is smart to an extent. Like yeah. We have Alexa and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not quite as elaborate as what I do for a lot of my clients. This is a whole well, condo. Yeah. I have to completely retrofit it to make a lot of those things happen. I don't feel like doing that right now. Yeah. Um, my apartment in New York definitely has a lot more of that technology. Yeah. Um, what about what about you? Um, my apartment in New York, um, I have all of my audio visual kind of connected into like, you know, one system, which is great when it works, but when it doesn't work, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I also can do my heating and all of that, you know, remotely and cooling and everything. So I can get the house ready when I'm coming up here or going down to New York. Um, and I also like, you know, I do love in New York, I have an away button here. I don't have that, which is kind of a problem, but this house, um, you know, it's just a different setup. Um, and it's a little bit, I did this 10, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I have smart TVs and I have, you know, it, it's to an extent, you know, but, um, I, you have to be the kind of person that wants to keep up with it uh, mm -hmm. because it, it's always evolving. Right. Uh, and you also have to be the kind of person that enjoys it. I mean, sometimes I'll like go to turn my volume down on my stereo here and I have to go through like six steps because I hadn't touched it in so long <laughs> right. that it kind of like went back to home base. Right. So who are you? Home right. <laughs> right? But then there's those, and that drives me nuts. But then there's moments where like I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and my room's kind of warm. So I just pick my phone up and I turn the heat down from my phone in my room and I don't have to go anywhere. So I, you know, it's pros and cons, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the other night I was in my, I mean, my guest is in my guest house and the dog started barking and I heard a weird noise. So I just like got up, locked the door to my bedroom and turned on the, like the entire alarm system in the house. And I was like, look, if this person's gonna get me, you're gonna have to work. <laughs> you have to work for it. I'm not just having sex with anybody. <laughs> you gotta be good at being a burglar, or they're not having sex with me. Work, work, work. Uh, so are you doing any redecorating while you're at home? Of my own place, no. I am still working on my apartment in New York. I'm trying my yeah. my, my best time to get that apartment finished. Yeah. I want to get a photograph from my Rizzoli book because um, yeah. it fits yeah. into one of my chapters that I'm working on. It has a, it has a certain theme. Yeah. But um, as you know, working in New York, you know, full time, it's hard to get a lot of things installed with contractors and. And right now, with everything being shut down, it's going to be a bit of a backlog yeah. for a lot of people to get back up yeah. and running. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to take I'm a minute. hoping to get something done, but yeah. I, it may have to just be. If anybody done. can do it, you can do it. I bet you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, I have a That's question right. for you. What makes an interior beautiful to you? Um, well, I love the comment that uh, Genevieve made yesterday about karate chopped pillows. Yeah. <laughs> Those are not beautiful. I love that you watch. I, I, do love they, I love that you watch house calls. Thank yeah, you. yeah. I mean, I, like I said earlier, I mean, I, you support you support your own people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So I, but I agree with that. I think that uh, genuine beauty is not forced. It's not something that is um, genuine beauty is um, perfectly imperfect. Yes. You know, it's it's not forced. It's not um, driven by rules. It's it's, right. it's driven by principles. Yeah. Um, and I it's love something that. that doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, I always say I love people and I think you qualify as one of these people. I like people that take what they do seriously, mm -hmm. but don't take themselves too seriously. Right. Or take themselves Amen. seriously at all. Amen. They have fun with it. Um, Corey, Corey Dakin, Jamin. <laughs> how did I screw that up? I probably had a little too much wine. I've been struggling with throwing that name out since I was in first grade on one yes. little short line on my term paper. So trust me, Corey, it's all good. <laughs> you are awesome. I love you. Oh, I love I'm you thrilled. too, Tom. I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better. As um, part of my friend group, um, you're an awesome person. And um, and I'm glad that you are healthy and you're well and that you are home and that you are, um, and that you're just dynamic man full of energy and you're just a great guy. 
and a great designer. So thanks for being a part of House Calls today. Um, and I want to thank everybody for um, coming out and sending us our questions and, um, and participating and inviting us into your home um, and, and being a part of House Calls today. So thank you. We love getting questions. Um, and um, Corey, thank you again. Um, please send any questions to media at tomfelicia.com. And that's T-H-O-M-F-I-L-I-C-I-A.com. Media at tomfelicia.com for our Friday segments so I can answer them. And just to let everybody know, tomorrow my guest is the super fun and incredible Jeffrey Bill Huber, who I used to work for for almost four years. Um, I think almost like, like exactly four years. Um, he's going to be on tomorrow. He's great. It'll be a lot of fun. Corey, I love you. Stay well. I look you forward too. to the next time that we can have shenanigans and uh, lots of fun at High Point. And also, when you're in New York, will you give me a call? Or I'm of gonna, course. I'm going to find you and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal your glasses. <laughs> I will shoot you a text. I promise. All right. Love you. <laughs> All right, love. love everybody. Stay healthy and well. I will see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat place with this batty ass decorator, one <laughs> o'clock tomorrow, house calls. Love you all, see you tomorrow, bye-bye.